Welcome back to The Leverage Advantage and today we have an awesome guest. The Leverage Advantage is a show to show you how to make the most money with the least amount of effort. Uh, today we have Carlos Reddick and Carlos is a highly sought after direct response copywriter and marketing consultant. I know because I've engaged him before and now he's worked with all levels of entrepreneurs from six-figure startups to nine-figure mammoths and he travels the world and learns about new cultures. Now, Carlos's primary mission is to deliver as much value as possible to his fellow marketers and copywriters in an authentic and straightforward manner. Uh, some of you might not know, but Carlos has published a book entitled The Copywriting Playbook, How to Make People Buy Your Stuff, Even If You Suck at Selling. Uh, Carlos, thank you very much, man. How have you been? Good, man. I appreciate you having me on. It's, a, it's an honor. I saw that you had this, and so I'm excited to be on here with you. Cheers, man. I'm excited to have you here. Now, tell, tell me, Carlos, what are you doing now and who do you help? So it's actually pretty funny. I've, uh, I still help some clients. I have a few clients that I work with on a retainer basis, um, but I've actually just started launching my own products and it's the best thing. If this is leverage, one of the things that copywriters many times don't have is leverage because they get paid a very large amount of money, eight grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever it might be, but then after that, they still have to fulfill. They still have to do all this stuff and it's still trading time for dollars. So I've quickly realized that although I can become a highly paid copywriter, it's very hard to break into the multi-million dollar range and still kind of have a nice way of life, right? It's without grinding it, unless you're using some kind of leverage. And for me now, um, I started transitioning into selling different digital products online, primarily in the martial art niche, which is... Uh, Bruce Lee's martial art, which is Jeet Kune Do. I've actually built one of the biggest fan pages on it, and uh, it's cool. It's something I trained in for over 10 years, so when I built it, it was just kind of for fun, and it took off, and I was like, wow, let's sell them something. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, dude, like, I, completely, I completely agree with you. Like, especially with people who have, you know, have, are really good at their technical skills and they're just really good at doing it. It becomes, they get trapped in doing it. And, um, and if you look, like, I, I keep using this example. If you, look at, if you look at all these people out on the golf courses making millions of dollars a year, they're doing shit. They're just playing golf. And so if you're making money and, and you're stuck in your business, you just got to know that there's a better way. And, and how you know there's a better way is find out these people who are doing it or doing it the way you want to do it, and then and then learn from them. Um, tell yeah. tell me about your story, man. I know I know I know that uh, you you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. This is not something that you know just dropped in your lap. Tell me about your story and and your past, man. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny when you were bringing up you know just what you last said. I actually learned direct response copy and marketing from my martial art instructor. So when I started martial art at twelve years old, I'm thirty now. I started at twelve. And by around 19 or 20 years old, I started teaching at his school. And I was a very big introvert. I'm probably still at heart an introvert. I don't like going to public places and things like that. So you can imagine teaching in front of, you know, 30 something people, 40 people, that was like nerve wracking for me. So he was like, okay, well, one of the ways that we can train you to, and it was great on his behalf because he, he knew that he couldn't just keep making me do the same thing because I was just failing. <laughs> it was the whole thing of just keep doing it. Uh, keep speaking in public, keep speaking in public. It just wasn't working for me. I was just losing students for him left and right. So it wasn't good. So he was like, you know, why don't we try teaching you some copywriting? So he showed me the copywriting stuff, right? He, and I didn't even know anything about it. He was like, write some of my advertisements here, write some of my direct mail pieces, read all this stuff on John Carlton and Gary Halbert. He just gave me stuff to read. He was essentially my marketing mentor. And I didn't realize it. I just thought it was my way of doing martial arts. Um, so long story short, I actually, within a few years, it took me a while. It was a big learning curve. I started not just getting good at copywriting for, for him, cause I was writing for his stuff, but I started being able to teach better. I was being able to, uh, bring people into the school, close them on training on a free class and then close them on a bigger package and then actually teach them and make them want to refer friends. So the whole process, I started looking at it now as a salesperson, not so much as like, okay, you know, I got to teach this martial art thing. It's no, they got, they're coming here 
not just to learn martial art, a lot of times, I, and this is kind of going off, but from a marketer's perspective, I realized that people that came to my martial arts or my instructor's martial arts school and eventually mine when I started my own, was they were escaping work. They were escaping some kind of reality. And the reason they came here wasn't to learn how to kick people's butt because many times they were 30, 40 years old. They didn't want to get a black eye. They didn't want to do any of that. They just wanted a nice workout hang out with some cool people, and again, just break out of their normal reality. So just like in copy, when you want to suck people's attention in, you're stopping them and taking them away from their normal reality. So whether you're doing it in person or whether you're doing it online or face-to-face -face or whatever it is, the grabbing of the attention is a huge skill, and I kind of learned that through copywriting and then through martial arts. So it's, it's kind of my, uh, my, funny st my funny start into copywriting. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, man. And um, when you started, when you first started business, I know it wasn't a, it, I know it wasn't a, it wasn't an easy journey. Like when you started, what were your biggest challenges? Man, you, well, one of the biggest challenges, my my business partner at the time when we first started our gym, we automatically started with a ten thousand dollar overhead because we had a gym, we had a physical location, right? You have to pay rent, and a lot of people online, I think, forget that real businesses at one point in time had to pay rent before making any money, which made them grind to go pay the rent, right? So when I see some people, and this is for anybody who may be listening, who's like, man, I haven't seen results in three months or six months or one year. It's cool. Like, you just got to keep on going. That's part of business. It's normal. Um, but yeah, one of the biggest struggles for me was when I went on, on my own, the big difference from doing it from a martial arts instructor and doing it for me was like obviously the bill was stuck with myself and my business partner and we had an investor so we had him kind of breathing you know so that's not always good and um and man i was like i, I don't know how to market where did i where did he get these direct mail lists because we weren't doing facebook ads back then it didn't really exist right so we were we were doing direct mail and, and seo and stuff like that and I was just like, I don't know how to start. So my, my biggest thing was, how do I make money today? I need to make at least 100 bucks. How do I make 100 bucks? And so we had a beach nearby. And so what I did, I would go to the beach every single day, and I would have a big a stack of flyers. And so instead of just flyering on cars, hoping, crossing my fingers that someone would come, I would engage every single person. I would get their contact information. And I was doing this because I was hungry. I like, I need to like buy food. And I'm like, I need to close somebody so we can eat, you know? It's going to be bad if the martial art instructor can barely teach because he's so weak from not eating. So I was like, we got to close some people. So we went out, we started doing, and this is the biggest skill I learned was that if, even if you don't know all the, the, the magic like voodoo of marketing, you have to think, how can I acquire this customer? And at that time, the fastest way for me to do it when I didn't have money, I didn't have any real resources, at least what I thought, I was like, well, I have myself and I can get some flyers done for like $100, let's go out there. So again, I would go out, I would go to the beach, and I would just talk to every single person. I would literally stop big families because I was targeting families because they generally had the money, especially if they wanted to bring in four or five of their kids. That's 500 bucks, right? A month. I was like, so much for me. So uh, I would go up and I would say something, something along the lines of, I would just run up in front of them, like, hey, 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 I'm not crazy. Uh, I know it may look like that because I just totally ran up to you and I'm a weirdo with a beard. Trust me, please don't beat me up. But I have a flyer and I hand him a flyer, put it right in the, in the father and the mother's hand or whatever. Boom, I have this gym I just started up a few weeks ago. And we're having a free week for everybody that I hand this flyer to. Would you guys be interested in training with us? And they'd say yes or no. And I'm looking at this. I'm, eventually, it wasn't always that clean. It was just, this was developed because I'm like, well, I need to get their minor commitment. If I get them to say, yeah, that interests me, instead of giving them the flyer, then I can get their contact info. So again, I say, okay, cool. So would that interest you? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Well, what's the best email and telephone number so I can go ahead and register you guys? And I have my little piece of paper. I'm writing it off. So I'm, I'm expecting it. I assume the close. And so I'd get their contact information and all of these people would show up. And one of the biggest things in the martial art business was getting people who said they wanted to come to their trial class to actually come. But now that I met them in person, gave them the, the, the flyer, got their confirmation that they'd be interested and said at the end, okay, so am I going to, can I count on you guys to be there? Yes. Okay, cool. Make sure you can bring three, four, five of your friends also. So I would get people to bring, I mean, it was amazing. But the biggest thing that I learned was that you have to just go out and do it. And sales is the number one thing, whether it's sales online, sales in person, whatever it is, getting those minor yeses, those little commitments, it's huge. It's huge. You can do it in email and sales letters, as you know, minor yeses, minor commitments can make that big commitment happen. Awesome, man. 
And and for you, what was that turning point like for you? Uh, you know, I know you you were grinding and grinding and grinding for a long time. You know, I've seen I've seen pictures of you. You know, living in you know in less than comfortable um, situations, but yeah. Like, yeah, those uh, are the best. Those are the best. <laughs> you know, I've had my own moments too. Uh, you know, what was the turning point for you? Um, the turning point from owning the gym to online, or the, well, the big turning point I would say is. Man, the big turning point for me for was just hunger. Like I was here in the States, we have food stamps. I don't know if you got, do you have food stamps in Singapore for people who are broke and can't afford it yet? See, we have it easier. The government just says, here's like $250 a month, go buy some food. So I was on food stamps. And so I was like, oh, thank goodness I have that. And so when I got on that, I just realized, I was like, man, I'm like at the, the lowest of the low of the entire country. And then I went on Google and I saw that the top 1% in the entire country, or it was like four hundred something thousand dollars a year. I, in my head, that didn't seem like that much because I always heard on the news, "Oh, the evil one percent, the evil this." I'm like, the evil one percent? They don't even make a million dollars a year. Like, I can make four hundred thousand. I can do that. And it just became real. So I was like, I'm on food stamps now. If I can get to half a million, I'm the top one percent. I could write a book or something. And so that just kind of became my little fuel, and I was like. Let's do it. So that was a big turning point of saying, I'm going to get this sales game down and I'm going to make sure that I actually start taking this seriously and get people in. But the transition that took me from owning the gym to doing stuff online was, it's funny, I actually read the book and so many people have said this, the four hour work week. And when I read that, I was like, this is like magic. It can't be this easy. That's insane. And uh, I started essentially just flipping websites. I was hiring people in the Philippines to build websites for, I believe, $100, $150. And I was selling them here in the States for like two grand. So for me, that was my first like slice of the online life, so to speak. And I was like, man, I'm making basically the same amount of money that I make and take home from the gym. I'm making online in my underwear. Like, I don't want to do the gym anymore. If I do this full time, I could really hit that $500,000 goal. You know, so I, long story short, I kind of pushed away from the gym. Uh, I left that for my business partner and just went all chips in and haven't looked back since. Haven't looked back since. That's awesome, man. Like, I, that's, that's a lot of, there's a lot of synchronicity between, you know, uh, a, a symmetry between what you're saying and what, what we went through as well. For one, uh, you know, I looked at what the top 1% makes. And, and, you know, well, at first I looked at the top 10%. And it's like $100,000 a year. I'm like hundred thousand dollars a year is not difficult. Like it's eight thousand dollars a month. That's what the that's not the top ten percent makes. And then I looked at oh okay, let's see what let's see what the top one percent make, like the ninety ninth percentile. It's like four hundred thousand. Is that it? Yeah. So that 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 was a huge motivating factor for me as well. I mean when I when I uh when I did that research, I was doing maybe a hundred thousand dollars a year already. I was like, what? I'm top ten. That's ridiculous. I'm already top ten. <laughs> right. You know, how much more? How much more does the ceiling go? Yeah. Um, and yeah. then uh, for for me as well, uh, you know, like maybe in 2013. In 2013, I, we were in a really bad partnership in one and I. And uh, when we had left that partnership, we were like sixty thousand dollars in debt. And in order for us to get back on our feet, you know what we did? We we built an agency. So we sold websites. We sold we sold websites for fifteen thousand dollars each. Five, ten. Oh, better than yeah. what I was doing. That's for sure. Holy, yeah. and, holy! We outsourced. We outsourced the development to India, to the Philippines, to wherever. And so we made a we made a relatively tidy profit. So we that's how we did like a hundred thirty six thousand dollars in six months. So we didn't even have that many clients, really. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's funny. So what I realized, and I don't know if you guys realize it, but the whole agency thing with the man, it's just so much management. And that, that is not me personally. I realize that at least when I, with my martial art thing, like it's not crazy. I spent 50 bucks a day and I make four to five fifty dollars sales a day. And it's just consistent. I don't have to think about it. It happens. I wake up and that's kind of the beauty of it. But man, it's like, I don't know, man. There's no other way in this online life. I, 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 I've thought about it so many other ways. I think because I like to go shooting. I don't know if you see my Facebook stuff. I've seen. But I shoot a lot. So I've thought in my fantasy land, I'm like, man, how cool would it be to – oh, and this is how, like, dumb businesses start. I'm like, man, how cool would it be if I just started a gun range and I can make a membership club? And I'm like – now I'm like, oh, you know what? This is just my, my, my emotions getting into it. I'm not really thinking of it like a business because the, at, the, at, at scale for this business – 
would be like a month in my online business. It, it wouldn't even make sense. It wouldn't, it, it would be silly, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. I do. Like, um, if you look at the people that are making the most money in the online space are, are not people with services. They're people with products, right? Cause you know, the product gets sold. You don't do shit. Like maybe all you do is you, know, you put, you, you put your marketing on autopilot, you know, spend a bunch of Facebook ads and it generates your return on investment. Uh, and you know, that's what, that's what our good friend Alvin does as well. Like on a huge scale. Right. And this is one, this is one of the things that Alvin taught me as well is that if you, um, if you run a service-based business, like your this, even though you make a lot of money in the beginning, when it comes to scale, it's very difficult to scale because your delivery is based on people. And people are so unpredictable and they're so difficult to manage in general, right? Um, yes. And the other thing is this: when we did that agency model, uh, you know, you and I were the same. We like to sell. Right, but when it comes to the delivery and having to do the project management to make sure that the site gets uh, gets delivered, that's so our income goes up. And when we make the sale, then we got to go into delivery, and we're like, shit, it goes down, uh, right? And then, exactly. and then, all right, you're done. You go make a sale, and your income goes up, and then you got to go into delivery, and it goes down again. So that that wasn't something that that we would do. But that being said, we run an agency now, but in a very different way. <laughs> In a very different way. So now all I do, all I do is I, I, I make the sale or I generate the lead and then I pass it to the team and the team delivers it. You know what I mean? Like I have a project manager, I have a, a COO, I've got like a CMO. So all I do, I generate the lead, I make the sale or we manage the sales team and they go, they go do it. So, so, you know, that way, just sales, 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 marketing, marketing, marketing. That's all I do. Man, you know, the next step now is you just got to generate the lead and have your sales guys do it. And then pick up the phone and close and you just shoot them 50, hundred yeah. dollars a close. Or exactly. Something. Exactly. So now I've got my sales guy, he's sitting in Thailand and he, he just closed three sales last week. Uh, yeah. So, you know, ah. he's sitting pretty, we're, we're good. Yeah, that's we're awesome. Good, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks man. Now let's see. Uh, what's the big tip or advice for listeners when it comes to creating leverage in their business? The big tip. Find out how you can replace yourself as quickly as possible. If you're the, if like I right now, I, I, well, I work with Everett, so I actually pay Everett, like the same that you guys paid up, I pay him like seven, eight grand for a sales, like he doesn't even hook me up, like it's ridiculous. So I do the same shit and I mean, so my skill is copywriting, but if I'm gonna really wanna scale my Jeet Kune Do business, my online business, I want to be the visionary behind it and the guy saying, okay, here's what I want to do. I want to run this off and do this, but I don't want to be sitting there doing the typing all the time. So to do that, I'm trying to replace myself by hiring a nice group of copywriters that I can trust. Just like what any, anybody does. You want to have your handful of copywriters that you can outsource to. So if one is too busy or one is too sick or one sucks for some reason, you still have someone else that's good. But that's, so my thing would be find out how to quit, whatever your superpower is, think of how you can replace yourself. And unless that superpower is just the visionary shit, then, then that's probably what you should be doing. <laughs> nice. And tell me, tell me, man, uh, if you could go back in time 10 years and tell your old self one thing, what would it be? Oh man, get a face to face sales job as fast as possible and don't go to college. <laughs> okay and and what does they, 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 I took a long path it took me like six or seven years to get out of college because I was just I hated it so long so much I just it, I dragged it out for too long my advice would have been like man just don't go get a face-to-face -face sales job get good at that shit and then yeah. I'm sorry for cussing get good at that stuff and then go do that stuff okay. online <laughs> I, I said it I said it too <laughs> I should have just said it when I uh, when I introduced your book man <laughs> and <laughs> It's very similar to, it's very similar to my path as well. You know, like I've been in direct sales my whole life. I started, you know, like the first, well, my first business was at 17 and uh, I, I sold, I'm not sure if I can say this on, well, I'm in Singapore, who cares? Yeah. I, I, I sold bootleg CDs, right? So I bought a CD writer. I got, I got songs from Napster and LimeWire and then I made custom <laughs> audio CDs, right? And back then nobody else had a CD writer, right? And, and you would buy, and no, normally what they, people would do is they would buy a, 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 an album for 15 bucks or buy a compilation for 15 bucks, but they had no control. Like you, an album, you only listen to one artist in a compilation. You listen to a bunch of artists, but you have no control over who. Or the other alternative is you buy a single, you listen to the same song three different ways, right? 
So That's what it. I offered, what I offered was like way better. You know, you tell me what songs you want in what order, and I sell it to you for ten bucks. Hey, what? That's <laughs> that was Dude, my you first. Were a hustler. <laughs> hustling at seventeen. That's badass. Yeah. And awesome. yeah, but then like you know, I so I I when 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 time came for me to to go to university, I was like, nah, I don't really want to go to university. Like I don't really need it. Like you know, what am I going to use that piece of paper for? I don't intend to get a job, right? Uh, but you know, we're we're in Asia, and you know, Asian values. My parents wanted me to go to university, so I did. I went. I choose. I chose uh, the University of Wales, uh, entrepreneurship and management. And so, you know, it was, it was a good university and I, I chose it because I wanted to learn the things in, in, in the course, like, you know, accounting and law and marketing and all that shit stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I got you going. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, rapport, bro. And, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and, and but the thing is, I didn't finish it. Like, you know, I did it, I did it for maybe about four or five years, but I didn't complete it. I think I did every module except the last one. Right over over the course of five years, um, because well, primarily because I think I I to be honest, I think I wanted to make a statement as well. I just didn't want to, uh, you know, I just want to say like I don't need this piece of paper for anybody else to validate me. Like I, I run my own business. I you know when what am I going to use this for? Right. Um, exactly. I might I might still go to university, get a bachelor's degree just just for the fun of it. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll just see. Do it about- online. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I I could do that as well. Yeah, you can outsource the homework too. I used to outsource it uh, on what before it was Upwork. No, before it was Odesk. Was it Upwork or Odesk? Before? It was Whatever Odesk it was and Elons. Now now it's Upwork. Yeah, well, yeah, I was doing it on Odesk when I was outsourcing my homework. <laughs> Very nice. All right, man. I'm gonna give you some quick fire questions. Know. Say what? Uh, let's go. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right. So what's the best advice you've ever received? Learn how to sell. Excellent. And can you share one of your personal habits that you strongly believe contributes to your success? Every single morning while I'm cooking eggs, I've always got some kind of motivational thing going. Something, whether it's Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, whoever, my buddy Chris Widener, who you know, I've actually got his stuff too. So I put him on in the morning as well. Maybe now that he moved back to Scottsdale, I can actually get that in person time, so it'll be better. I think a lot of people don't really give enough value or give enough uh, attention to the cumulative, uh, the cumulative result of constant learning. You know, like uh-huh. everything that you've learned, it will help you in the future, and it builds on it. And a lot of people don't don't really get that. They think you know, uh, they don't see it. That's so true. It's funny. Uh, the way I like to look at it, because I do it and sometimes it's passive listening, sometimes it's active listening, because sometimes I'll be cooking and focusing on something else and it's on in the background. But the way I look at it is I could either have a bunch of like, and I like rap and stuff, but I could just have a bunch of crap music or whatever music playing that's not necessarily going to do anything for me. And it'll be passive and I won't pay attention to it either. Or I could have Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins and all these good guys in my ear. And I think that whether it's passive listening on either one, I would get more benefit passively listening to the Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, and all these other guys than I would the other thing. So, I mean, I'm in it for the long haul. I think if anybody's in it to win, like really make as much, like I want to make $100 million. I'm nowhere near that. But in order to do that shit, I've got to be laser focused. I've got to be, le- I got to be able to leverage shit for sure. But part of it is I have to keep my mind right. And so that's why I've been doing every every single day, seven days a week, my routine i wake up every morning and just put on the tv and my tv hooked up to my xbox which hooks up to youtube and i stream all the good videos and that's it nice what book would you recommend as a must read relentless by tim grover awesome all right so this is my last question i always ask this as the last question if you had 30 seconds left to live what piece of advice would you give Spend as much time as you can building your empire as early as you can so you can enjoy your time not hustling all the time and spend it with your family. Awesome. Or the love. Fantastic. All right, man. Thanks, Carlos. Um, everybody, thank you very much, Carlos. I really appreciate you spending the time. It's an honor to interview you. Um, if people are interested in finding more about you, how can you be reached and where should they go? Uh, just go ahead, add me on Facebook, on my personal Facebook, uh, Carlos Redlich, R-E-D-L-I-C-H. 
and uh, shoot me a private message. I'd love to connect. Wow, that's awesome. All right, guys, and if you want to get some of Carlos's stuff, you can get the copywriting playbook, How to Make People Buy Your Shit Even If You Suck at Selling. It's on Amazon. Go get it. I promise you it's going to be it's gonna be valuable and it will change your life. All right, man. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Hey there, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, check out the relevant video here. And don't forget to subscribe to us for more marketing tips, techniques, strategies that are working for us, or just more behind the scenes fun. See ya.